All right, and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this in the future for our next deck, which is going to be Selesnia Tokens. So this is the, the first deck of the day, um, as you see up there in the Today's Decks section. We did play Sultai Midrange uh, before, did really well with it. Um, Sultai Midrange is just the best deck in the format. Um, we played that deck uh, and had a 5-0, and now we're playing another deck that I think is, is pretty good. Um, I think if I was playing a paper tournament uh, here, I would probably you know take a look at that Sultai deck, of course. But then another good option is Selesnia Tokens. Um, this one is a lot more um, linear than, than Sultai because we're trying to do our thing um, and do our thing really well. You know, we don't have nearly as much interaction here um, uh, in Selesnia Tokens. Um, so, uh, no, I don't think, I don't think you need more Shalais in the sideboard for deputy detention. I think you're fine. Um, so what we got going on here is we're trying to make lots of little creatures. Um, we got some good two drop slots. I think Tithe Taker is a really good addition to the two drop slot to be able to go with Amara and Sapling Migration that were always the best. But then bef besides these two, you always just had to play like... Thorn Lieutenant or um, Adanto Vanguard. I liked Thorn Lieutenant the most, but I like Tithe Taker um, more than Thorn Lieutenant. I think that that first ability is pretty good in this format. It's really good against Mono Blue, um, you know, making it hard for them to, to counter your stuff. It's you know good against other control decks as well. And then of course, uh, whenever it dies, it makes a token, just like Thorn Lieutenant would as well. Um, and uh, of course, we have our, our Legion's Landing. Um, and then we have our, our other normal things, like History Benalia is really powerful. Venerate Luxodon, of course, is awesome. The other new card here is Unbreakable Formation that I think could just be amazing with this kind of deck, where you have un uh, end step March of the Multitudes to make a whole lot of creatures, then you untap an Unbreakable Formation. That sounds awesome. We've already had uh, mar like end step March plus untap Flourish is like you know a huge combo that kills people. Sometimes you just have Tristani, which you know is still pretty good with the plus one, plus one, when you untap. Now the formation gives you that plus one, plus one, which is pretty good also, but makes them indestructible too. So, uh, yeah, that's a pretty, uh, you know, pretty nice, pretty nice. Side, so this kind of deck is going to kind of struggle against control in general. Like, like uh, Esper control is going to be like our, our hardest matchup. But we're we're good against the aggro decks and against Sultai we get to go wide. Against Sultai, the the main thing is if they have finality or not. They have the three copies of finality. They don't have them. We're going to be killing them, that kind of thing. Um, we of course have all these harpooners to help out Mono Blue also. Same with Baffling End. So here we go, Selesnia tokens. Nope, no Arch of Orozco. We're not really going for the late game. <laughs> yeah, we haven't done uh, as well the last couple of days with, with all of the different brews and everything. Um, so, yeah, played a, a tier 1 deck, went 5-0 pretty easily. Let's see if we do really well with this one, too. Um, no, no Immortal Sun either. We're, we're really not trying to get to... Like, this deck... This deck really struggles with... with uh, Casting six mana spells. Like, there's not a whole lot of lands in this deck. Well, I say that. And we have a five lander. I'm going to keep the second one to be Flourish. I'm just using this one, just getting a, a forest out. Um, so we can, you know, hit our... Hit our land drops because, you know, like, basically we, we top out at Tristani. Don't really need more than five mana. Um, so I'm, I'm going to keep the second one for Flourish. That could be useful. Ajani comes in against control decks. When I, whenever you're bringing a Do in a Danto Vanguard, you have, like, that plan of, like, a Danto Vanguard plus a Johnny against control. You know, decks of sweepers, you want, you want planeswalkers that... <clears throat> you can play on like turn four before their sweeper and still advance your board, uh, but not get swept up. A 
really want to draw some kind of creature here where I can play a creature and then also venerate Luxodon. I really want to double spell this next turn. Like, another History of Benalia would be perfect. Like, another History of Benalia would be our best draw. Huh. I guess I'm chumping with this thing. I think our deck does pretty good against Mono Blue. Opponents had a really good start. It's a really good, really good start. Um, I mean, so I, I do get to Migration plus Luxodon, but then I only have the 4-4 Luxodon back. And if they just attack out, I have to chump block the 6-7 to keep from dying. But then these are 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 7. Oh, I, I'm not going to have... Oh, I can't flourish, though, the next turn. What if we... 5, 10, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, Tristani doesn't kill him either. All right, so I'm leaving. I'm leaving one of these one ones back to be able to chump block the Thorn Lieutenant. I think that's my best option. I'll go ahead and flower to make sure we have the sixth land for Shalai, so we can just start activating Shalai. I'll fight triple block. Three, six, eight. They kill like my two knights. I'm gonna do this. My my opponent's kind of messing up here and letting me trade, honestly, um, because Thorn Lieutenant's activated ability. Like I, I don't even know if they remember about Thorn Lieutenant's activated ability, but because of that activated ability, I could basically just never trade with that thing. Like if they would have just not played the Steel Leaf Champion first. Um, you know, if they would have just attacked and not played Steel Leaf, I can't. I have to chump block because the thing's lethal. It doesn't matter, they drew drew a really good card. It's a perfect card. This you know, this turn. Make that five power. Could have just waited a turn. Unfortunately, these things can't block Steel Leaf Champion. I would love to be able to block Steel Leaf Champion with those with these things, but they can't. For the funeral. 
We're still alive. We're not dead yet. Stop. The Steely Champions. I have to just attack with one to go to six, so I'd, I'm not dead. Um... Yeah, it, it may be better to con convoke and then and then block with all... Yeah, I could have blocked with, like, the seven tokens. The only thing is that that does eat up one more token, but honestly, I probably should have just to gain the other life. I was like, you know, because it does kill three tokens, because uh, Harpooner's power is three. So we would we would have lost an extra token, but we would have gained um, another five life. So that's that's honestly probably worth it. You, you know, it turned out using that flourish hurt pretty bad. Would have really nice to have that flourish still. All right, baffling end for Steel Leaf. I think that's all I want to do. I may just take out Shalai. They're going to have these harpooners. Conclave Tribunals, too, though. Formation is absolutely not meh. It is. This is the perfect uh, matchup for Formation. That would have been an amazing draw all of last game. All right, one tight staker, one shalai, and yeah, maybe just the two shalais. Yeah, that's fine. What's what's harpooner gonna kill? Um, I don't think I really like Growth Chamber Guardian. I think it's too slow. So our first turn is History Banali on turn three. Our first play is History Banali on turn three. This hand's not much better. Amara is probably a card I could have. I could have trimmed an Amara. Um, honestly, maybe trimming Amara. Yeah, that's that's probably the thing because I can't I can't attack in with Amara. That's probably a card I could have trimmed there. Fun looks to have another pretty strong hand. We have another mulligan. There we go. Best card we could draw. Best card. So 
formation does give uh, does give this vigilance. So vigilance means I'm you know if I if I play that and attack with Avara, we're not tapping and making a token. Where I, you know I'd like to tap and make a token. But I'm gonna wait till after we have. So I'm gonna wait till after we have the lifelink tokens from Tristani. <clears throat> there. Going risky, getting another lifelink token. If they pump Steel Leaf Champion, if they have like summon champion to put on Steel Leaf Champion, I'm dead. But this is our our best way to win the game, is having another lifelink token here. And you know, unbreakable formation next turn. Sure. Whatever, man. Whoops, wrong way. In the newest list of Rakdos aggro, you have two Demanding Dragons and one Dire Fleet Dare Daredevil for the Mono Red matchup. These three cards all seem great, but I'm not sure what to cut for them. Um, things that things that died to, to Chain Whirler is, is something to cut. Uh, Midnight Reaper that deals yourself a lot of damage is also a good card to cut. Um, yeah, those would be the cards to take out. Man, our hands have not been looking too good. We don't have many lands in this deck. We have 21. We keep on having a bunch of lands. We only have 21. I think I'm going to keep this. I don't think we're going to draw many more lands. I think we're going to draw some good spells. I like having, you know, good turn two play with Tithe Taker and then another, you know, have another one. In certain matchups, these two are really strong. Unfortunately, this is not one of those matchups. Third game in a row, our opponent has turn one Land War Elf. Hey, you're welcome, no problem. Well, that's good. I'm glad our opponent just used a cast down there. I'm not sure exactly why they did, but I'm glad. I like that was a little hasty on their part. had wild growth walker that completely blocked tithe taker and they felt to, they needed to cast down tithe taker like this thing this thing can't attack through a wild growth walker oh well glad they used it unfortunately my my whole try not to draw any more lands plan isn't working out too well two of our three draw steps being lands We can still win this. It's all about March of the Multitudes. Mitchin! Thanks for subbing there for the second month in a row. Or subbing there for two months. 
Thanks, Minchin. I really do appreciate that. That is sub number six. Their life total seems like it's really, really high, understandably. Um, but the help of like March of the Multitudes and Tristani and stuff, like we can, we can, uh, especially if they don't have removal for Shalai, we can, we can fight through this. Our deck's capable of it. But we need to draw spells. Okay. That's the card we can't beat. As far as cards we can beat, we can beat all of them except for that one. Um, Yeah, Baffling End, Baffling End is certainly the card that, like, you know, definitely seems reasonable here with, uh, um, um, with, uh, Baffling End being able to take out, uh, Wild Growth Walker and Hydroid Crisis. I'm going to trim one Amara, one Legion's Landing, one Tithe Taker. I'm going to play one of each of those. Yeah, Baffling End is great against Sultai. Um, because even if they even if they kill it, they don't get like their Wild Growth Walker back. Um, our first hand just did nothing. Which was pretty unfortunate. This hand doesn't really do anything either unless we draw land. So let's let's try to get lucky. I think this is better than a five card hand. I think this hand this hand can do a whole lot if we get some lands. I could see playing the Ajani's over the Shalai's. That's that's probably a sideboard switch to make here is a Johnny over Shalai. They have more answers to like to the creature, um, with like Vivian and everything, and Vivian, um, Hostage Taker, Chupacabra, that kind of stuff. Where's he making that trade? Uh, no, I would not play. I would not play um, Takali Honor Guard in this deck. Um, I like Kral Harpooner quite a bit. No, I would not make that trade. And yeah, that's that's the biggest reason. <clears throat> um, you shut off. Especially Venerate Luxodon is a big part of the deck.
Yeah, I, I could definitely see taking out the the two Shalai's for the two Ajani's. I think I would. I think I would uh, do that the next time playing the deck. Fortunately, I don't think we're gonna win here. Um, you know, with having so little land, just can't really beat Soltai on two lands. It's just not not possible. Even even if our opponent is incredibly aggressive on their cast downs. Nice, good job, Atrio. Way to go. And we're very dead. Um, I think our, I do think Slesnia tokens is very good. I think we've just had some really bad luck in these games. Um, you know, we just had, you know, we haven't had good starting hands in any of these, but I do like this deck. Just hasn't been. Wasn't our league. Hostage taker costs four mana. Baffling end exiles things that cost three or less. So can't target it. Starting over. It's it's all good, Genghis. Uh, that means donation deck. That's a deck that that somebody donated to see play. Okay, let's tr let's just draw a white mana source. We draw white, white, one white mana source. We can um, have some very powerful turns here with these histories and Luxodons. Let's see what kind of counter magic our opponent has. Hopefully, not much. Unfortunately, I think I just have to block there. Um, don't want to. But I think we have to. We needed that card. Alright, Baffling End, Harpooner. Um, a Johnny does rebuy Harpooner. Um, if we want to be doing that, Make 
Make sure to keep the chat clean. Yeah, night killing curious obsession is is good. That that part of night of autumn is is certainly good. <laughs> um yeah, we have a lot of things to um to potentially cut. All of our two drops are like pretty good in this matchup. I like I honestly like all of our two drops. I kind of want to cut March of the Multitudes. It just seems really expensive. Same with Conclave Tribunal. I kind of like all the two drops. No, I don't think Ferocity on will ever be unbanned. No, um, it's just it's just at the point that there's there's just no real there's no incentive to to unban it. Um, it's just they're just going to leave it banned. Um, there's there's no upside to unbanning it. You know we have you know it'll rotate out in like uh, six months, seven months. Um, there's just not. Like the the downside that could happen if if for some reason whenever they unban it if red like really takes over it's you know I don't think that would happen and it probably won't happen but you never know like that that's a um, a scenario that could that could happen and and if it does um, you know they basically. Yeah, you know, like that's like a, you know, like a, a terrible scenario. Um, so they're just not going to unban it. So yeah, sorry, all the everybody that loves. Um, the love's poor little Ferocidon. These these sister Benalia should just be able to win us this game. They have two cards in hand. I don't think our opponent's beating history Benalias. No, Nexus of Fate is banned in best of one. You can still play it in best of three. So just that one format that's only on Arena, best of one, it's banned in that format. I'm going to take out one Tristani for a Knight of Autumn. And a Sapperling Migration for another. With us adding in all these two drops, I guess like we're, we're likely going to be casting stuff on turn three or four, like with these Migrations later. So yeah, I'm going to take out one, one Migration, one uh, Tristani for two Knight of Autumns.
It wouldn't make sense to ban Nexus completely in Arena, but then not ban it in, like, in Paper or Magic Online. Like, like that does that doesn't make sense. Um. So it's. Um. Like that. That's just not something that'll ever happen. It's only banned in the the best of one format. It's just on Arena. If it gets banned in best of three on Arena, it'll get banned in best of three in Paper and best of three. Um, on Magic Online. I don't know about this hand. It's a five lander. I need to toss this. I've been I've been mulliganing so many of these hands. Like last league, every single hand I had was a six land. Or was or was a or we went to three three six card hands so i was tossing a lot of hands like this the um i mean we have a two drop and we have a baffling end that's not good it's not great baffling end's kind of good though oh i d i do not care if migration gets spell pierce so that's that's fine yeah, soul time, soul time mid range is really, really good. That deck's, that's the best deck in the format. Come on, deck. All right, so twenty one lands. We got five of them in our hand. Oh yeah, birthday was awesome yesterday. No, Tide Taker is a lot better than Incubation Druid. No, this this is a this is an aggressive deck, for the most part. Yeah, I've, I've gotten used to the glasses. I, I've worn, I mean, I wore glasses for most of my life. So, um, wasn't hard, not hard to get used to them. Um, I wore glasses, like nothing but glasses for like 15 years in a row before I got contacts. Um,. Let's see how this does. Oh, I guess I guess dive down messes this up. Oh, they did not have dive down. Wow.
Come on, deck. So that's seven of our 21 lands. Which is... Which is not good. Obviously. Obviously. Obviously their last card was Wizards Retort and then they were gonna untap for Curious Obsession and then and Tempest Gin. Of course, why not? Why would they not have that? We just can't can't draw very well. We didn't like you know our hand wasn't our hand wasn't very good that that I kept there, but our draws did not help us. Yeah, you know, we didn't draw basically anything good. Like I I feel like one of these times that I'm keeping like a good amount of lands, we're just gonna start drawing a bunch of spells because you know with our 21 land deck that we're not going to just continue to draw more lands like one of these times one of these days it's not looking like it though No, this deck would not be better with card draw. No. The strength of this deck is how explosive it is at times. That's where the, the strength of the deck comes from. Because I got, I got tired of mulligating to six and only having one land and... and just not playing anything. <laughs> So that's why I'm keeping these five landers. I would like to not have to keep five landers. But that's what the very first league that we played this, I was good on, yeah, I would mulligan like the land heavy hands like that. And. Our hand just kind of always sucked. This is a little better, though. This time we drew a couple spells. Drawing the... Yeah, you know, we, we drew some good stuff here. Admittedly. With the history and the Amara. This is what our deck is supposed to be doing. This is why we don't have very many lands. We're supposed to be just spewing out our hands like this. Yeah. Just don't, yeah. When you keep lots of lands, don't draw more lands. That's what we need to do.
Our pilot was kind of uh, counting that up, seeing if that was going to be game. Okay, here we go. We had to lose the first three matches, and now, now we're going to start doing our thing. Yeah, now we're back to work. That's what slow tokens can do. I'll keep this uh, for Flourish. Alright, good history, Benalia. What's our opponent doing? So many, they're just playing all these green white creatures. They're playing limited. Get that thing out of here. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's gonna be like our cat deck. Yeah. Centaur Tribal. Bob, thank you so much for the sub there with Twitch Prime. Very kind. I really do appreciate that. That's getting some hype boats in the channel. Seventh sub of the day. It's still telling me 49 for now. My ice cream truck truck's gonna cost a lot more to insure than I like, but I've been allowed to go a couple to a couple cancer rallies I've next month so much and already. later in the summer. I won't lose. You can't and I'll be able to donate some nature. of the proceeds for my participation, which feels good and also makes me money. Yeah. So yeah, that's a that is a day of ups and downs, you know. Have some bad things there, have have some good things. Yeah. Oh, are you serious? Nurgle, the lists are oh. They were already due. Well, if you want to make a lot of decisions, that Sultai list, honestly, is... That's the best thing I know. Um, that's the one that I would recommend. But that may be too many decisions to make. Oh, you're welcome, Cobb. Thank you again. All right, Tithe Taker, do your thing. Look at this. We we actually had we had a three lander with four spells. We have not had a three lander with four spells yet. That has not not been a hand that we have had. Um. Do I do I think White Weenie is better than Celestia? They're pretty similar decks. Ah, it's at 9 a.m. this time. Whoops. Will they still let you submit your deck? Hopefully they do. Hopefully they're not too mad at you. MP 
Imperial Ariasaur. That card's busted in Ixalan Limited. That card's real good. Power four or greater. What's this power? Three? Can you add them together? Three plus one? I can see the four. Do a little addition. Carry the one. Hmm. I cannot play Shal... I can't play Shalai and Luxodon, so I'm gonna Tithe Taker and Luxodon. Alright, we'll get on it. These are some big creatures. We don't have to worry about Sell the Wreckage, of course, because of the Tithe Takers. So Tithe Taker is awesome against Sell the Wreckage. Yeah, our deck... This deck can just explode. Um, no sideboarding again. Yeah, so Tide Taker is a good addition there where you, d you don't have to worry about Settle nearly as much. Yeah, unfortunately the Imperial Armasaur was not up to the task. Almost was, but not quite. Alright, two lander. I definitely like having turn to Amara um, to try to start attacking with Amara, making a couple creatures, hopefully, for blocker, before they have blockers. Yay, they pushed it back. All right, there you go. Good. Hmm. So I'm playing Amara, or sorry, I'm playing Saffirly Migration over the other things because I want to be able to flip Legion's Landing. And like if our opponent plays like some blocker that I don't want to attack Amara or Tithe Taker into, I can just like send these three crappy one one. I can like play Legion's Landing, send these three crappy one ones in there, um, and flip landing that way. Getting a lot of creatures out now. Unbreakable formation looking pretty good for next turn. Yeah, it looks like this is Naya Dinosaurs. Um, hmm. I guess Sell the Wreckage could be a thing. I guess I should play around Settle. Um, I can double Tithe Taker, but they can still pay for Settle because they have six mana because they have Chromatic Lantern. Um. Attacking with Amara because Amara makes another another creature.
guess I probably should have just done that first. I probably should have just played the, the Tithe Taker and the other two things and just Conclave Tribunal to weigh that, that thing first. They couldn't cast Settle and then attacked in. Yeah, I, that's that's what I could have done. They only had the one planes. Cool. This is unfortunate. Three three lands, four spells, and we have to mulligan. We just don't have don't have things to do. Me now. Uh oh. Now. Of course, if we don't draw land now, next turn we get to flower, get a plane, still play Tithe Taker. We'll see if they want to attack with everything and flip their legions landing or not. Thanks, Yud. Yeah, this matchup's usually good for tokens, but doesn't mean it always is. Yeah, our our hand's not too strong. Don't know if we're going to win this game. <laughs> you haven't seen more mono blue with each day. Do you have a suggestion on how to combat their plan? Um... Yeah, like you just need you need cheap interaction. Uh, Kral Harpooner is awesome if you're playing green. Um, you know, Kral Harpooner's stock has just been going up pretty high here. Dovin's really annoying. Nobody's perfect. Can we get a second white source? Even me. For these histories, please. We only have four lands that are not white sources. We have four uh, basic forests. Our other 17 lands are white sources. Shit. You're doing me a favor. So they can trade with like their vampire and the flyer. My my life total being at ten. Okay, yeah, they're just jump blocking. I 
constantly seek to innovate. So we're gonna history again next turn, and then the following turn, unbreakable formation. We're gonna have two life linkers out the following turn. That's a good that's a good card to draw. I guess if they want to trade with it, with basically anything, I guess it's okay. It's not ideal, but... These results are an anomaly not to be repeated. Alright, we're looking great now. I have to block these. Um, you know they have Pride of the Conquerors. I have to block them. Otherwise, otherwise I'm dead. Okay. Opponent made that easy. Um. <laughs> All right, so a baffling end for the Benelish Marshals, uh, Knight of Autumn, for their uh, all their enchantments and everything. <laughs> yeah, need. Need to win some gold after using all the buying all the packs recently. <laughs> but now, yeah, I was trying to help MTG Junior Girl. Um, no, I don't think our opponents sniping. I think they were just they're conceding because we had the double history of Benali out. Um, I got six cards. All my cards are good. Hmm. Shalai's good against their flyers, though. Like, they have, like, their own flyers. There's not really anything else I want to take out, though, besides it. So, I guess so. No, I don't think March is too slow. I think March um, is kind of how we can go over the top. Tithaker is a, a good blocker, um, trades for something, makes another token that can trade for something. You know, it's a it's a two-for-one blocker, um, and still an early play. Gotta have a whole lot of early plays. No, you only get it if you have the City's Blessing Matters card. Um, those are the only things that, um, you know, that kind of trigger the Ascend.
Um, hey, okay. How's life? So if I kill the baffling end with the Knight of Autumn, we get a we get a three three Dino to go along with our Knight of Autumn, which is fine. It's you know not bad. That's a, it's a good option for Knight of Autumn to have. Um, but I'd rather see if they have something like a History Banalia um, instead. Actually, let's cancel. There's a good chance the migration we can we can actually wait and kick this. Um, do I want to play the other legions landing? Yeah, I guess so. That was like the thing I was kind of debating on. We basically just don't, we don't really need to destroy the, the baffling end for a dino yet. We'll see if there's a better target. Found a better target. Found a better target. Pun just lets us flip our legions landing also. Hmm. Opponent's gonna play Niv with that mana base. Yeah, maybe they have just Niv visit chilling over there. Re rewarded for some patience. Should be petting you more. Okay, three and one. See, this is what our these are what our hands should should look like. Oh no, control. Oh no, control, alt, delete. I mean, we could be facing the same deck we just played against though. May not be control. Ugh, never mind. Tribunal is the card? Really? So I want to flip. So I want to flip Legion's Landing as as fast as possible. So I led with the landing. I'm going separately migration on turn two. Um, flipping Legion's Landing is our best way to win this matchup. Oh, as per mid range. Well then. Hmm. The 
this is not not necessarily so good for us either. So by attacking there and flipping the Adanto, we do get to cast Tristani next turn, which is exactly what I want to do. And yeah, if they find creatures and, and get creatures, of course, we get them back with Tristani. But the, the problem is our deck is filled with spells. Uh, they should be able to just get enough spe Like, they should just be getting spells here. Um, so I, I don't think Tristani is going to help us out too much. Never mind. Never mind. Opponent just grabbed a creature. Now we draw a land, we get to flourish, give all these things plus two, plus two. Now our opponent's not playing Nova. Oh, they didn't take another Amara? Why not? Alright, come on, land. Nice. Probably lethal. Yep, that's lethal. That's very lethal. It's 25. We just played the spells our opponent knew about. They could have taken Tristani with the Thought Erasure. Could have done it. Um, I feel like Baffling End could be good yet again here. Against Deputy Detention, Thief of Sanity, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, they really wanted Thief of Sanity, right? They really wanted the Thief of Sanity to, to hit the opponent. I hope that felt pretty good. Um, our, the Esper Control is, is not too good of a matchup. That's, like, that's what we st usually struggle against. Um, flipping Legion's Landing, though, is a, something that we can do. Alright, Dr. Pez. Get some good dinner. <laughs> when I get value from Tristani's last line of text, I know I'm going to sleep well at night. Um, Adanto's Vanguard was, was something... Yeah, I'm certainly debating about the Adanto Vanguard. Um, it's not too good against, like, Hero Precinct 1 making tokens. But I guess we have lots of ways to pump it up. Harpooner for Thief could be a thing. Thing is, I don't know if those are just like better than other things that we're already doing. Kind of like the cards that we're playing. I don't like the cards we're playing. I don't think we need to do too much. They could have angels. We'll we'll see if there's you know we can we can reassess uh, for game game three if we need to. All right, let's draw a green land. Thank you, thank you, deck. Making some tokens, but we get to go wider. Thanks to March. Mm 
Um. All right, take care, whales. Take care. Yeah, right. Why doesn't Tristani have convoke? So if we if we march, we get to make four to four tokens with march. Um. Which isn't spectacular. Yeah, very glad they added the resolve all button. Absolutely. So we make four tokens, play Tristani, attack. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. Oh wait, I have to make three tokens. But, you know, Amara tapping makes the fourth token. Bold strategy just to take it. They just took it. Bold strategy. Yeah, the second march should do a whole should do a whole lot for us. I can cast it during my turn and it and it definitely resolves uh, because of the tithe takers. But then if they have a sweeper, um, you know, then they can do something about, like, the sweeper. They probably don't have a sweeper if they're just using a cast down like that. Don't think they have a sweeper. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. They could have deputy at detention. Hmm. All right, so this is really bad against deputy at detention. But it's good against counter magic. I think it's more likely they have counter magic than deputy of detention. Yeah, I think if they had deputy, they would have just played a last turn as well. I think so too. Yeah, some kind of visual glitch with that field flipping. Yeah, they're dead. Good job. March of the multitudes. And green white tokens. Alright, final boss. We're moving on. Four and one. Ready, Hawkeye? Dun 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 dun. Hawkeye, you ready? Let's 
go, Hawkeye. Let's get him. Dun, 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 dun. I don't know why I shocked there. That was definitely an unnecessary shock. Could just go forest planes. A very unnecessary shock. <laughs> Show dominance to the final boss. Dun, dun. What? What is that? Cry the Carnarium? Cry of the Carnarium, huh? Thanks, Coderic. The big problem is, I, you know, I really wanted to flip Legion's Landing there. That's the big thing. So if I if I shock in with the Temple Garden, my opponent just knows I, I absolutely have March of the Multitudes and can can uh, play accordingly. Um, so I don't really want to tell them, hey, I have March of the Multitudes. Man, this final boss is tough. All these cry of the carnariums. Stop gaining all this life, too. We don't have any three toughness things to punish our opponent. Like, at all. Oh, that's rough. What's up, Noah? Do the course, Jody. Absolutely. Man, this is... This is pretty tough. Alright. I mean, Adanto Vanguards are like our, our plan, but they... 
they, um, you know, with them having all these Cry the Carnariums and Moment of Cravings, they're, like, really good against Adanta Vanguard and against Unbreakable Formation. It's just pretty unfortunate for us. Yeah, our opponent likely has, yeah, our opponent likely is playing Vivian uh, to go with, and some Planeswalkers to go with, uh. <clears throat> the crisis. Taking out the Conclave Tribunals too. I'm just gonna, gonna kind of take out my removal. Um, don't think the Conclave Tribunals are gonna really work. A five lander, zero lander. Go to four. Could go to four. Is four gonna have a forest in a plains though? I mean that's the most the most the most playable part of this hand is having a forest in a plains. <laughs> we do have five reasons to keep. <laughs> With us having so little lands, I think, um, in our deck, just in general, I think it would be pretty rough going to four uh, and, you know, having lands. We at least have two lands. And, you know, whatever. They thought Razor any of these. Those cards are all bad. I've won below five lots of times. Here on stream, even, too. I had that famous win. Jody, remember last time we played together? I multi five against against Mono Red on the play game three. Had a zero lander. Zero lander on the play. Five cards kept it one with this deck with Selesnia tokens. That was really clutch game win there. I'm playing the Lexodon because that's the one our opponent knows about. Um, so just playing that. Our creatures are too big. Can't ritual of sit. Can't ritual of sit and cry carnarium. Away these things. Can't use your, your sweepers to kill our venerate Luxodon in July. I wonder if they had that... They probably had that Ritual of Soot in... Um, they probably had that in their hand whenever they took... Whenever they took March of the Multitudes. Yeah, our only removal souls we've seen from them so far have been Moment of Cravings, Cry of the Carnariums, and Ritual of Soots. We haven't actually seen anything. Oh, we saw a Mortify. Never mind. They played a Mortify. No, not Mortify. That was a that was a previous opponent. 
Never mind. Because, yeah, they're playing Sultai. So, I don't know if we've seen anything that actually kills this stuff. Alright, so they can't double block either either big creatures. They cannot double block. Um, because if they double block either one, they die. So we get to safely attack with everything. They can they get to eat a 1-1 one -one and chump block something else. Or they just dubs chump chump. Double chump. <laughs> and we win. Take back that concede. All right, so Venerate, Luxodon, and Shalai turn out to be pretty good against our opponent, filled with early removal spells. I think we should have Knight of Autumn. Darth Taco needs more. Needs some Teamer Climb. Teamer Climb's a pretty good deck. Thanks, Darth Taco, for resubbing there for third month. Okay, final going to fin, go into a game three against the final boss. Let's get some brand new in here. So they're playing playing Krasis's. I probably should have something that kills a Krasis. Nah, we don't need to kill a Krasis. We'll just go around a Krasis. Krasis dies to soot. We have our opponent's removal for Krasis. Hmm. So even though we need land, more lands for Tristani, I think with this kind of matchup where like the games are going to go longer and um, I think like a big way that I lose is just like flooding out and not drawing spells. And so just went ahead and well, I think we want to draw an abundance of spells so just ship that to the bottom. I could certainly see the Tristani getting like Thought Erasured out of my hand before I can play it anyway. Wait, my opponent said I went first? Oh, yeah, you're right. My opponent did have me go first, didn't they? Hey, Xavier. Yeah, doing really good. Doing really good. Um, Thoughtseize bug. Certainly think this is going to be the sweeper, right? We've seen so many cries in ritual sets. Yesterday was 113 was our subtotal. No cry, no ritual of sets. All right, well, let's go. Let's go. Let's try to end this game. Dang. Did not draw the land for Tristani. Ugh, so close. So close. All right. Do I play this Tithe Taker? So if they have Cry of the Carnarium, then we don't get the token, and so playing the Tithe Taker is a waste. But if they would have had, if they had Ritual of Set, then the Tithe Taker, you know, is good, so. 
So Ritual of Soot made it good. Five wins! Man, we thought the dream was dead. But we have defeated the final boss. See, we just had to start with that 03 of like... Um, having all those bad hands and mulligans and everything. And then... Then our deck did its thing. All right. 2,100 gold. Give me that gold back. So yeah, this is a, a, a strong deck, honestly. I I do like this deck quite a bit. Um, I like this sideboard with, like, Kral Harpooner. Um, Kral Harpooner is just a great card these days. And so there we go. But I did have an 0-2 league with Selesnya Tokens. We went 0-2 really quickly. Um, had, like, you know, lost all four games right in a row. Mulligan, three of them. The other one kept a really bad hand. All of our hands were just bad. Um, so we ran it back and then went 5-1. And we also lost our first first one. So we were also 0-1 after going 0-2. And then we won our five. Hey, thanks, Jelly, for the five-win cheer. Um, so Tithe Taker, uh, just, it works better in the main deck here. Um, Adanto Vanguard is just so bad against so many decks. Um, it's just really, it's just really bad against all the, uh, all the aggro decks. It's not good against, um, even like Soltai and everything. And, and Tithe Taker does a whole lot, um, that making their spells cost more, uh, does help you resolve things quite a bit. And then, you know, whenever it trades, uh, getting that afterlife token, getting that flyer is pretty nice. Because, you know, like that flying creature can uh, be bigger with the help of Tristani or Unbreakable Formation or Flourish or anything like that. Shalai with the pumps and all that kind of stuff. Crazy Pyro gifting a sub to Timido. Thank you so much, Crazy Pyro. Let's get some more hype in the channel for Pyro and some Santa emotes. Santa Pyro. So that is sub number nine on the day. Um, 48 there. All right, so if you're watching this video later on on YouTube, of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned to the channel. Um, that's going to be it for Selesnia Tokens. Thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next video.